The Westwinds Breviary is our gift to you during the shelter-in-place order concerning COVID-19. We offer you hope and healing as lovers and followers of Jesus Christ believing these short online liturgies will elevate your spirits and unify your homes. May God bless you richly as you endeavor to renew your mind and love your neighbor. Hey church, thanks for being with us tonight. Now the world begins. Everything past is prologue. We write the future. Judges, chapter two and verse 10. Now all that generation also were gathered to their fathers. And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. I've been thinking a lot about generations. You know, with the recent passing of my father, with my time spent with my mom and my brothers at home, I've, I've just been thinking a lot about generations. Now, now, biblically, a generation is anywhere from 25 to 50 years. Um, but really, what a generation means is like the, the time, the passing of the baton from when one group of people were in charge to when another group of people were in charge. Uh, generations can also refer to like like big sea change moments, you know, before the exodus or after the exodus, before the flood or after the flood. I mean, something huge happens and a new generation emerges. Well, guess what, friends? We, we're a new generation in this post-COVID world. I mean, we have lived through an apocalypse. We, we've lived through a, a time in, in which our whole world, everything, our, our economy, our finance, our international relationships, uh, our, our sense of health and well-being, our certainty about the future, in which everything has come under mass amounts of scrutiny. And, and it's not over, but it's overing. It's coming quickly to a close, which means we are now the beginning of a new generation. That's true if you're 16 or 65. That's true if you're 43 or if you're 87. The truth is th this is a new generation. Now, in Judges, we're told that a new generation emerged that did not know the Lord or the work God had done for Israel. Now, there's two things to know here. Number one, what a tragedy. Everybody ought to know the Lord. Everybody ought to know the work of the Lord. So, so the part that really sort of breaks your heart is the second part. Why didn't they know the Lord or the work of the Lord? Because the last generation didn't tell them. I mean, how else are they ever going to know unless it's passed down from father to son, from father to son, from father to son, from mother to daughter, from grandmother to grandchild? How else are they ever going to know? You and I are right now at the cusp of a new generation, and we have two responsibilities. First, to make sure that we pass on the legacy of faith to those that are around us, beneath us, behind us, and before us. We, we have a responsibility to be a people who carry on the legacy of God's faithfulness to the world, to tell people about the goodness of God and what God is doing right now, and our our second responsibility is like it. Now that we know and now that they know, we have to act consistent with God's purposes and plans for healing the world. So, so what's going to define you, you in your generation? I mean, this is your generation. This is your time. What's it going to be like? Is it going to be a time of remarkable strife? Is it going to be a time of remarkable backbiting? Are we going to be throwing grenades at each other all the time? Are we going to be losing our minds and, and acting inconsistent with the gospel? Or will we rise above the adversity of our circumstances and find ways to be Christian men and women whose first allegiance is to the cross and out of the love of God find a way to forgive, to heal, to reconcile, and to restore. And when there's injustice, to oppose it. And when there's violence, to bring peace in the midst of that violence. And that's a high and holy calling, friends. So let's make sure that nobody can say about you and I what was recorded about these people here. Children left alone 
Give freely of your gifts, for our God is on the throne. Let's go down together. Lock our arms with pleasure. Share the grief and give our love to all. Let's go down together to the healing waters. But I have you and you and me, and God has everyone. Let's go down together and lock our arms in pleasure. Share the grief and give our love to all. Let's go down together to the healing waters. For I have you and you and me and God has everyone. For I have you and you and me and God has everyone. Thanks for being with us, everybody. All of last week, of course, I was with my mom and dad in their home in uh, British Columbia, Canada, and, and there was just an endless parade of people um, ringing the doorbell, bringing cards, dropping off meals. And I said to my mom, I said, this is, this is amazing how much support you have. Um, do you like it or want it? You know, because I'm quite private. And, and my mom said, no, David, it's beautiful. Um, all these people, they, they're, they're bringing gifts because they want to show what your father's meant to them. And it got me thinking about all the times that I have seen mom and dad, not just dad, but mom too. I mean, bringing meals to people, visiting people in the hospital, sharing their home, sharing their life. And, and it just hits home for me, man, that a life of giving repays. When you're somebody who's oriented outwards and what you want to do most is bless and serve and heal others, you're never going to have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. You're never gonna have to worry about whether or not you're gonna run out and you're never gonna have to worry about whether or not you're alone. Because giving is one of these principles of the universe. That when you give, God takes care of you. So friends, as you give today, please consider it an act of worship, a manifestation of God's generous spirit in you. And may God bless you richly as you do. The end has arrived. Thus a generation sleeps and another wakes. What will you do with your time? What will define your era? Thanks for being with us tonight on the West Winds Breviary.